And welcome back, everybody. Taking a look at AP Chemistry Unit 2, Section 3, the Big Vesper Theory. Vesper stands for the Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. And so what that is is basically uh, t expanding on our Lewis structures that we can see from uh, previous ones. And we can now translate these uh, compounds into shapes and angles. And the big question is, okay, what kind of shape will this take on? What type of um, what, what, what type of angles will we get and so on. So it's really asking the big question of the three-dimensional spaces within the, these. Okay, so uh, pretty much really with the uh, valence ele uh, shell electron pair theory, we're going to be counting up our, valence, our shared pairs of electrons and we're going to be counting up our unshared because those electrons are going to be repelling one another and consequently giving us uh, different shapes and everything else. Uh, molecules will give characteristics like the polarity. Um, and by polarity, think about poles on a magnet. We have a positive side and a negative side. We're also going to be getting angles and shapes off of that. So this is the section that you're going to have to do some memory work. Um, yes, you will have to be memorizing some things like... Uh, if I have this many shared pairs and this many unshared pairs, it will be trigonal planar. Um, and we give that a less than 120 uh, angle and so on. So it, it is a little bit of memory work, but it is the three-dimensional shapes that we're after. All right, so let's just put this all into action. Um, let's get going right away with it. We're going to be taking a look at some different examples of compounds that we've made before. Boron has three valence electrons. Um, we have seven valence electrons around fluorine. So that's 21 plus three is 24 total electrons. And so if we take a look at the structures, we end up with this. Okay, so I'm gonna go kind of fast with some of these uh, for the sake of time. We know how to do these Lewis structures and we wanna now decode the Vesper theory. We wanna decode what we're seeing. Around this core, I see three shared pairs of electrons Here's one, two, three, and we have zero unshared pairs of electrons around that core. Now, when I keep on saying core, remember we need three points to uh, consist of an angle. And so I see I have three and zero. We call this shape trigonal planar then, and we get that it is uh, 120 for the uh, angles in here. So it is not going to be set up, even though I drew it like this, that looks like 90 degrees, and then up at the top is 180. That drawing is fine, guys. Uh, that's not an issue, but then we would decode that this would be called, um, we drew the Lewis structure. Again, you can draw it that way. That's no big deal. The geometry then would be called the trigonal planar. And yes, you have to spell out the entire thing. So trigonal planar. The angle then would be 120 degrees. And then there's this concept of polarity. The easiest way to think of polarity is that uh, we don't see it's electron heavy on any particular side. So we see that it's evenly distributed, even though it looks like uh, I have more electrons down here, looks can be deceiving because this is the actual structure. And so in fact, it is nonpolar because it's evenly distributed all throughout, so non-polar with that one. All right, let's take a look now at the next example. We have carbon with four hydrogens. That's the actual structure for methane. Okay, so we see around this carbon, okay, four valence electrons. We have two over here, so we're all shared all throughout. I see now that we don't, by the drawing, it looks like I have 90 degree angles, but in reality, this is the shape that it's making, okay? So you gotta think three dimensionally with this, and that's why we're doing all this. We call this, um, to decode it all, we would say that we have four shared elect uh, pairs of electrons, and we have zero unshared around that core. And so looking at our chart, we see that this is called a tetrahedral arrangement pretty common one and the angle is in fact 109.5 degrees okay since it's evenly distributed all throughout it's not electron heavy on any side we would then call this nonpolar so let's take a look at an example that is polar okay we see nitrogen and nitrogen has five valence electrons we have three uh, hydrogens in there so that's going to be three times one is three plus five is eight total so here I have one two three four five, six, 
and so there's a lone pair of electrons around that nitrogen. So I have three shared uh, pairs of electrons. I have one unshared pair of electrons. Notice I keep on saying pairs of, and that's going to be the key to this. So if I look over to my chart, it is what we would call a trigonal pyramidal. Trigonal pyramidal because I have that uh, unshared pair in there, notice that that basically where that unshared pair of electrons is, this has a really large repelling force, okay? A really large repelling force in terms of repelling other, uh, repelling other electrons. And so what's going to happen is this is going to push the hydrogens down closer to one another than they would because these are shared up they're tied up in here this is going to have a much larger repelling force squishing these closer so if the previous one was going to be a 109.5 well we're going to be pushing those ends down a little bit more so then we would say that it's less than 109.5 and we're talking just in, uh, a couple degrees uh, within that okay so it's 109.5 and this one since I have electron heavy right here they're asymmetrical with that there is an example of a polar molecule okay polar in terms of electrons on one side now let's take a look at water water we already know water sticks to a lot of things it is the universal solvent we see that we have six valence electrons but we have two times one so that's eight total electrons that I have to account for so let's bond it to my hydrogens and so there's two four six and eight now I drew those up on top and bottom on purpose because there are openings there but don't give it the feel that this is symmetrical okay as I look at this um, here's what's actually happening those electrons uh, unshared here and unshared here, here are really repelling each other a lot, okay? They're going to be forcing these two that are shared in, involved in here, they're going to be forcing them even closer to that. So even though they both say one, uh, less than 109.5, this one's even closer to one another, okay? So it's just how this works with those structures. We would call this a bent, okay? So it's tetrahedral, but it's bent because I have two shared and two unshared in there so since it's two and two we see that it is referred to as a bent or bent triatomic the angle is still less than 109.5 and it is extremely polar in that one because of the two sets of electrons all right let's take a look now at the sulfur cyanide ion okay so we're going to see sulfur has a uh, valence electrons of six we have carbon with four we have nitrogen with five and since we have this one electron in here, and we're going to have another uh, electron inside, and so we're going to have 16 total electrons to account for. All right, so let's get our carbon in the middle. He likes to be in the middle of everything. And so we've got our nitrogen. And looking at our sulfur, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, and 12, 14, and 16. But notice my carbon is in here, so these guys are going to share in. And these guys are going to share in. All right. So let me clean that up. We have uh, we have a single bond on the sulfur side, but we have a triple bond on the nitrogen side. All right. So here's the key. Oh, and by the way, on the outside of all of this, because it is an ion, we do have one electron in there. All right. Here's the key to all of this. These single bonds, the first time they're going to bond is called, referred to as a sigma bond because they're happening at the S sublevel. But these guys notice that they came out of the P sublevel, okay, right here and right here. So those are referred to as pi bonds, okay? Very simple concept. Any double or triple bond in there, um, the first, uh, first bond is going to be referred to as a sigma, and the pi bonds are the second and or third one if applicable. All right. Now, when we're f using the Vesper theory, we don't include or count the pi bonds, all right? So that's going to be the biggest key. We see that we have, uh, just counting up the sigmas around this core that makes the angle, we have two shared, we have zero unshared, okay? Zero unshared. We only count the two shared because of the one sigma and two sigmas, so that's all that's in there. And so therefore, we would still count this as linear linear triatomic and the angle would be 180. Now, it is going to be polar because I see more uh, electrons unshared on this side than I do see on this side. So it would still be polar in there because it's not symmetrical, um, but we don't include pi bonds. All right, let's take a look at nitrate. 
Nitrate, uh, we have around the nitrogen, we have five valence electrons, and we have three oxygens with six valence electrons, and we have one more electron to account for. So 18, 19, and another five, that's going to be 24 total electrons. Okay, so let's put nitrogen in here. We've got our oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, and 24. Oops, the nitrogen does not have a full octet. So let's get a shared one. Doesn't really matter which one in, is included in here. Could have been any of those. Remember, those are resonant forms. And so I see around this one, we would see a double bond and a single bond and another single bond. Okay, those are all sigmas. And so I count up the sigma. Here's a pi bond. And so I count this as three and zero. And that would be a trigonal planar. And I would see the angle then would be 120 because around that core, I don't count the pi bonds. Okay, so uh, and then I would say that this is polar because I have three unshared, three unshared. Oop, on this side, I only have two unshared. That would be a polar molecule then. All right, last one. We're going to take a look at carbon with two fluorines and two chlorines. All right, so remember carbon has four. And then we have, essentially, we have seven uh, valence here and seven here. So I can just go four times seven is 28, okay, plus another two is 32 total electrons. Carbon in the middle. Let's go two fluorines. I'm just going to put them on opposite ends just for fun, I guess. It doesn't really matter. We've got our two chlorines, okay, so two, four, six, eight, and now I have 32, and that ends up being basically full all around. We don't have to violate any octet rules. Life is good. And I see around this core then, I have one, two, three, four pairs of um, shared electrons. And so then I have tetrahedral, um, just like what we saw with the previous ones. Now, the reason this example is here is because don't let the element influence if it's going to be uh, polar or not. Just because it switches, I could have done uh, my fluorines like this as well, and it looks lopsided because we have different elements along the way. However, it's the valence electrons that actually tell us if it's going to be polar or not. It doesn't matter which elements are there. As long as the valence electrons are equal or symmetrical all the way around, that would still be a non-polar molecule. Okay, guys, that's it. That's all we needed to do with this particular chapter our, sorry, this particular section is just look at Vesper theory and how to draw out those things and then decode using this chart. Once again, I, I, I'm sorry, but you have to have these memorized. So get to work on those, um, practice them up, and then just kind of keep continuing on with what you got. And we'll be practicing those structures in class with it then. Okay, so good luck to you. And I hope this all turns out well.